Good morning, everyone. Come on in, find your seats. Hallelujah. Anyone cold this morning? <laughs> Anyone not cold this morning? All right. Sorry, Stephanie. The people have spoken. Amen. Let's all stand up. If they could pause the music in the, in the background. Hey, Jeremiah, if they could cut off the music in the back. Just keep playing a little bit. Thank you, Jesus. Would you close your eyes for a moment? Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are right here with us. You're not high and far away. You're right here among us, and we thank you for that. You are here ready to move. You're here ready to refresh, ready to touch. So we choose to step into that this morning. We choose to step into your presence. I'm going to start off with a verse here. Psalm 97 says, The Lord is king. Let the earth rejoice. Let the farthest coastlands be glad. Dark clouds surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire spreads ahead of him and burns up all his foes. His lightning flashes across the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness. Every nation sees his glory. Those who worship idols are disgraced. All who brag about the worthless gods, for every god must bow to him. Jerusalem has heard and rejoiced, and all the towns of Judah are glad because of your justice, O Lord. For you, O Lord, are supreme over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. You who love the Lord hate evil. He protects the lives of his godly people and rescues them from the power of the wicked. Light shines on the godly and joy in those whose hearts are right. May all who are godly rejoice in the Lord and praise his holy name. May all who are godly rejoice in the Lord and praise his holy name. Can you say amen? We have some godly people here today. Hallelujah. safe within your name oh this we know this we know every voice you promised never to forsake what you began you will sustain oh this we know this we know
all of the heavens and the earth announce the fullness of your word this we know this, this we know come on shout it out today and every enemy will flee as we declare your victory oh this we know this we know In Jesus' name will break every stronghold. Freedom is ours when we call His name. In Jesus' name above every other. All hail the power of Jesus. Come on, like a mighty army, sing it today. Jesus' name will break. Every stronghold, freedom is ours when we call His name. Oh, Jesus' name above every other. All hail the power of Jesus' name. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Oh. Your shackles are no more, for Jesus Christ has broken every chain. I will call. I will call upon the Lord, for He alone is strong enough to save. So rise, your shackles are no more, for Jesus Hallelujah. Your shackles are no more. Your shackles are no more. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Everybody sing. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Oh, it may look like I'm surround, but I'm surround. Come on, bass. This is how I fight my battles. 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 Oh, this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I find my battles. Oh, this is how I find my battles. It may look, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Yes, I am. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded. This is how. 
This is how I find my battles. This is how I find my battles. Oh, this is how I find my battles. Oh, this is how I find my battles. This is how I find my It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded. Yes, Lord, we fight with our praise. We fight with our worship. It was just yesterday I was feeling so sick. My head hurt, my throat hurt. As I picked up the guitar and started to sing, I just started to sing and sing and sing. I just felt the sickness start to fade. I felt it start to leave. As you lift up your praise to Him, as you lift up your worship to Him, that's how we fight our battles. Let songs of thanksgiving come forth. In our challenges, in our struggles, let praise come forth. Let it fight. Just as we continue to play, I want you to open up your mouth to Him. You just start to sing out a new song. You can just talk to him. You can thank him this morning. Come on, church, don't be shy. Open up your mouth today. Come with thanksgiving today. Just begin to thank him. Hallelujah, Father. We thank you today. You are worthy. You are worthy of our thanksgiving. You are worthy of our praise. Thank you for breath and life. Thank you for healing. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, Lord, that you know us. You see us, and you love us. Oh, we fight with our praise, Lord. We won't be silent, Lord. We choose to lift you high. We choose to lift you high. Oh. This is how I find my battles. This is how I find my battles. This is how I find my battles. This is how I find my one more time. Oh, this is how I find my battles. This is how I find my battles. This is how I find my battles. This is how. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is here to touch. The Spirit of the Lord is here to refresh. To fill you up again. As you lift him up. As you sing once again. Whether you feel his presence or not. Step in this morning to sing. as you lift your hands and surrender this morning. Know that he wants to touch. He's right there. He's waiting. Brought you my baggage 
up in a row I was a stranger You welcomed me in your home Who is there like you? Who is there like you, God? I was in pieces You carefully made me whole You rewrote my story From ashes to beautiful Who is there like you? Who is there like you, God? You are whole I am holy, holy yours forevermore. Through all of my failures, you never change it all. There is no conditions, the evidence is the cross.
worship you, Lord. We lift our hands to you, God. We give ourselves to you. Every voice. my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my Savior on that cursed tree His body bound and drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb, the entrance sealed by heavy stone, Messiah still.
Jesus. Ushers, you can come. Put your hands together. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's heart. You lead us by still waters and to mercy. Nothing can keep us apart So remember your people Remember your children Remember your promise, oh God Your grace is enough Your grace is enough your grace is enough for me. Great is your love and justice, God. You use the weak to lead the strong. You lead us in the song of your salvation. And all your people sing along So remember your people Remember your children Remember your promise, oh God Your 
grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. So remember your people. Remember your children. Remember your promise, O oh God. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Come on, sing that again. Your grace. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Your grace, your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. One more time, every voice, just a drum. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. One more time. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father. We lift our hands to you this morning. We lift our hands to you. We thank you that your grace is more than enough. That you are good, you are faithful, and we look to you. And all the church said, amen. Can you give him praise one more time and then take a seat? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey everyone, welcome to Fusion and thanks for joining us. We're really glad that you're here today. This Tuesday evening, we're having ladies meeting. Ladies meeting is a time of building one another up and encouraging each other in our walk with God. Make sure you come join us and remember to invite a friend. It's going to start at 7 p.m. this Tuesday evening. Patterson Life Change Institute are going to be starting again on February 8th. Potter starts first and happens from February 8th to the 11th, at which time LCI will start and goes on until March 1st. It's a time of connecting with God on a deeper level, and you should definitely consider attending. For more information, contact Rich Deeds at 665-6868. Next Sunday, January 21st, we'll be having a fellowship time together starting at 4 p.m. Make sure you bring a dish along for yourself and enough for somebody else. And also bring out games or other fun things you like to do together, and let's have a good time fellowshipping. The Fusion Sweet Heart Banquet will be taking place on March 1st. We'll announce more details about this to come. But for the meantime, you can mark it down on your calendar. Thanks again for joining us today. That's all of our announcements. Enjoy the service. Good morning. Good morning. Um, it's good to see a lot of faces that I haven't seen since last year. Forgive me about that joke, but a little late, but I still wanted to say it. But it's really, it's really good to see many of you that I saw coming in. Um, and I see many faces that 
have not seen before here, so uh, welcome, welcome to, to Fusion. Um, if you would like to know more about uh, who we are, us, and uh, what are the things that, that we believe, or kind of where we stand in certain things, you can uh, talk to me after the service of any of the, the leaders, of anybody that you may know, maybe they invite you here, and, and, and you, don't know, you don't know how you feel about certain things. Uh, we have something that we do once in a while. It's called Fusion 101. And we don't really have a membership. And, and I really wanted to, to say this today because there is many people that I see every, every Sunday coming and going. And, and so in, there, in that class that we do, uh, we, we can explain where we stand in certain things, things that might be of your concern uh, when it comes to certain doctrines or things that, that we believe. So saying that, uh, I would like to close our eyes for a second before dismissing the, the kids and, and just thank the Lord. I don't know if you realize, but if you look around, there is so many people and, and we are so different and we come from so many different places and so many different backgrounds, but the Lord has all brought us together here. And, uh, and last Sunday, as we were, uh, as we were doing communion, I, I was looking at people uh, walking and, and going up front to, uh, to, to partake of communion. And, uh, and, I, and I couldn't uh, stop by feel overwhelmed by, by the love and the grace of God and how good he is to us. That he has all brought us all together in here with a purpose, with his purpose and with his plan. And we cannot forget that, how good he's been to us. So let's close our eyes and, and thank him one more time. Lord, we thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for the love that you have poured in our hearts and for how much you have done for us, Lord. We thank you and we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor, Lord. And we ask you to teach us and to show us how to live for you and how to love you in a way that we will honor you in a way that will please your heart, in a way that we, we will give back to you a little bit of, of so much that you have given us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for having us here. Thank you for allowing us to come together and in freedom and in faith and with boldness come to your throne and approach you and worship you and love on you and receive that love from you, Father. We thank you for being so good to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so children are dismissed. I don't know if there is not enough light or if I have too much light, but I cannot see. I don't know if you guys can twitch that a little bit. I, I can almost, know, I only can see a little bit on each side. There you go, that's better. So I have a lot, uh, a lot of scripture to read today. And I've been, uh, a few things that I've been meditating in my heart. And like I said, many of you, probably first time that you're here, you don't know. But I, I, I'm going to be speaking to you uh, from, from a place and, and from a heart of, of that you and me are family. Right? And your family can get away with a lot of things they say to you, right? So if you consider myself, myself family, take it from that place. We're brothers and sisters in the Lord, as I was just saying. We've all been, we're all, we have all been bought by, by the blood of Christ. So let's start reading uh, John 14, 15, and 21, uh, the New Living Translation. It says, that, it says, uh, if you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. For he lives with you, and he will be in you. This is Jesus talking to his disciples. He says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore. But you will see me because I live, you will also live. On that day you will realize that I am in the Father and you are in me and I am in you. This is 
a little bit of uh, the last time I, I was preaching here about this in him dimension, that we are in Christ as he is in God and God is him and the spirit is in us. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves them. The one who loves me will be loved by my father and I too will love them and show myself to them. A little bit ahead in the verse 25 and 27 says, All this I have spoken while I still, I'm still with you. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts, your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Then John 15, this is still Jesus speaking. John 15, 26 and 27 says, When the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth goes out from the Father. He will testify about me. And you also must testify, for, I have been with, uh, for, for you have been with me from the beginning. Now, John 16, verse 1 to 15 says, All this I have told you so that you will not fall away. They will pull you out of the synagogue. In fact, the time is coming when anyone who kills you will think they are offering a service to God. They will do such things because they have not known the Father or me. I have told you this so that when their time comes, you will remember that I warn you about them. I did not tell you this from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. None of you ask me, where are you going? Rather, you are filled with grief because I have said these things. But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am, that I am going away. This is the key verse for today. It is for your good that I, I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin, righteousness, and judgment. About sin, because people do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer. And about judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more that you can now bear. But when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why, why I said that the spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. I know it's long, but I consider it necessary to read all of this so that we can get a grasp of, of the importance of what I, I, I'm, uh, I'm about to speak today. Um, I'm going to ask you again to do a little exercise that we did last time. I asked you if you're willing to close your eyes, and I'm going to ask you a similar question like, like, like last time. Close your eyes. So my, my question to you is, if you know today is your last day on earth, where do you think your eternity is going to be at? Where do you think that, that you will spend your day? What do you think that will happen to your soul or, or to your spirit, to, to your body? What, will be, what, what your eternal destination will be? And the second question will be, do you know for sure that you are children of God? How do you know that? How do you know, how, how do you have that peace that you know that if today something happens to you and you are gone, you will be with God forever, for eternity. You can open your eyes if they're still closed. How do you know that? I have that assurance. I was having a conversation uh, a few nights ago with my wife, and she doesn't want to hear this, but I'm like, well, Lord, I'm like, I love my children and my family, but if, I mean, if you want to take me, I'm ready to go. I know where I am going. And, and that assurance that I have has nothing to do with my performance, has nothing to do with my ability to be, to follow certain lists of things that I need to do. 
that is an assurance that is given by the Holy Spirit, the one that we are talking about here, the one that Jesus was talking about. And Romans 8, 14 and 16 says, For those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. That was my question. How, how do I know that I am children of God? It's because it's His Spirit the one who leads me. Says the Spirit you have received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Fear of what? Fear of death. Fear of what, what people may do to you. Fear, fear of what you may think the devil can do to you. Because if you know that you belong to him, if you have the assurance in you that no matter what the world throws at you, no matter if you die, you are safe in the arms of Jesus, there is no fear. The Bible says that we, we, we have to fear the one who has the power to throw our, our souls into, into, into heaven or hell. And that is God. It's not the devil. That's him. He is the one that holds the power. And the Holy Spirit that it, it was sent to us was sent primarily for that reason. So that, that once we receive him and we put a trust in Jesus... And we know that we are safe from our sin and from our own destruction. We could have the assurance that we belong to him. It's the sign of the new covenant. It's the seal that the Lord has given to us. The spirit of truth is the one that gives us the assurance that we belong to him. And if you are here today and there is still doubts whether you're going to be where are you going to spend your eternity? I pray that you will stop listening to those lies of the enemy that say that, 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 that you need to, to, to keep this thing and that, and that your eternity, the destination of your eternity has to do with your ability to perform and to follow a list of commandments. You need to put your trust in Jesus. You, you, you and me are saved by works, by the works of Jesus Christ. But we often mix a little bit of law and grace. We often think that we need to trust Jesus, but then we need a set of other things. And depending on where you come from, is the set of things that you need to put in there. Some of us have raised that, well, we need, we need to dress in a certain way. We need to speak in a certain way. We, not, we need to go to the right church. We need to have the, set, the, the, the right set of doctrines and... and, 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 uh, and um, and theology, and if we don't have that kind of thing, then we might, we might be going to hell. Some of us have been convinced that if we go to the wrong church, some of us have been convinced that if we go to the, uh, we have the wrong friends, we might end up on hell. And we believe all these little things and all these little lies and, and we, we give our life to Christ and we serve him and we live in freedom. And one day we mess up and we die, we might end up in hell. But it's the spirit of God, the ones who gives that assurance to us and at the same time empowers you and me to live a holy life. It's that spirit that Jesus said, it's necessary that I live. So that he can come. I will not leave you as orphans. I will not leave you by yourself. Imagine the disciples that have changed their life and left everything behind. And for three years are walking with Jesus. And everything they know what, that, that they grew up with is all behind. And now Jesus is saying, I'm going to go, guys. It's like, what, what are we, we going to do? What's going to happen, Jesus? But, but his answer is like, you will not see me. But I will not leave you as orphans. And brother, Jesus left. He's not here. But his spirit is here. He is with us right here and right now. And, and, and every time I, I got to speak of the gospel about Christianity as a religion, I, I get a little bit of, of puke in my mouth. Because I, I hate. But for the sake of the point that I'm trying to, to, to make, let's say that Christianity is a, is, an, is a religion and we can level it up with any other religion out there. If you ask a Muslim where his eternity, where he's going to spend eternity, he, he doesn't have an assurance of where he's going to be. They, they, they don't know. Many other religions out there, they, they don't know what's going to happen to them when they die. 
because all of the, the things that, that, are, that are promised or said that they will receive are dependent on their complete performance. And that is not the gospel. The gospel is that we have been transformed and we have been, we have been brought back to communion with the Father because of the work of Jesus Christ in the cross. And when he left, he, he gave us the Holy Spirit so that you and me will have the full assurance of that. That we will not live in fear of what is going to happen to us. And that we will know that our destination is, doesn't end up in the grave. That there is still a plan and a purpose for you and me after that. There is a lot of other things that the Holy Spirit does. It brings, first brings the conviction of sin. It's the one that makes us realize that the way we've been living is contrary, that we are living, we are enemies of God. He leads us into truth, which is not just a verified fact. Truth is a person and it's Jesus. He leads us into seeing him. He empowers us. To live the life that he's calling us to live. He fills us with joy, with peace. He makes us the righteousness of God. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is not a matter of food and drink. But of joy, peace and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. It's through him that we are filled with peace, with joy. And that we can have the assurance that we are the righteousness of God. That we can come to the throne of grace and stand in, and be in right standing with God. Not because of what we do, but because of what he did. Because of what he accomplished in the cross. The Holy Spirit gives the church, gives you and me a lot of different gifts. So that we can help the church. So that we can help each other. And as I was reading at the beginning in John, John 14, it says that, uh, Jesus is telling them, says, it is necessary that I need, that I leave so that the advocate will come. When you look at that word in the, in the original language, in the Greek, the word uh, used there is the parakletos. And it's formed out of two different words. And basically means is the one who ends up the curse. The one who finishes the work of sin in your life and in mine. It is not only, it can be translated as counselor, as comfort, but it's not only that. In other words, other translations that I've read said that, that, that Jesus will basically have said, I need to leave, but I will send you another savior. Another, not as a different, but another of the same kind. Another that will save you from your own destruction, from your own sin, from your own stubbornness, from your own uh, narrow mind, from your own depravity. He didn't leave us alone. He sent us this Holy Spirit. And, and, and I'm going into all of this and, 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 and read all this scripture. Because I don't know about other churches. Uh, but but this, is, this is for us. And, 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 and this is an attempt, I, I feel, it, it, uh, as I, I'm follow, following the, the leadership of, of the Spirit. To, to maybe try to put us back in track about some of these things. About what is really that the Holy Spirit does. What is really that the Holy Spirit wants. Because... I honestly believe that the Holy Spirit has been grieved. And you will say, oh yeah, that's not news, Diego. We know that. We sin all the time. We offend the Holy Spirit constantly. Yeah, we don't need, yes, I know. We do. But there is a specific way that I believe we do this. And I, I, I can separate this in two basic, basically two, two different groups. And... And I come to this as I was reading, uh, uh, remembering the, the, the story of, of Stephen. Uh, they, they, they make a, 
an arrangement to, to present false witnesses and, and take him to basically to their court in there. And, and they end up stoning him. And before they kill him, he, he, Stephen makes this whole history le lesson of the Jewish people. All the way from the beginning. All the way through all the, the Old Testament. And he comes and he finalizes. And you, it says, doesn't matter. You are just like your ancestors. And you always resist the Holy Spirit. That was the claim. After the, the whole speech that Stephen, that, that Stephen brings forth, that, that, that was what he was confronting them with. You resist the Holy Spirit. And it says that the people didn't want to hear, you know, it's like they were throwing a, a, a tantrum. They cover their ears and they take their clothes off and, and, and then they stone him. But I believe that we can fall in two, two of these sides. And one of them is that, we can grieve the Holy Spirit because we resist Him. Yes, I know I already said about, yeah, that there, are, that there is all these things and that, that, that we do that, that don't please the Lord. We, are, we, we live with this, with this law of, of, uh, of our sin nature and we need to die to our flesh and die to ourselves every day by submitting to God, by submitting to His Word. But there is, there is a part of the church that that has rejected completely the Holy Spirit. And says, the Lord doesn't do this anymore. The, the Lord doesn't do that a, a, anymore. We, we don't need that. And, and I really believe we have grieved the Holy Spirit by resisting Him. And by resisting what He wants to do. Because oftentimes the Holy Spirit will lead us in, in, into situations that are really uncomfortable. It will lead us in, in, into, into things where our flesh is going to die. Where our reputation is going to be, is going to be, to, to be exposed and, and to be put on the line. It's going to make us uh, 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 make decisions and do things in our life that, will, that, that to the world, to the, to, the, to the carnal mind will look like foolishness. Will look like stupidity. It will even, they will even claim to say that what you are doing is from the devil. Many times the Holy Spirit will do that. And we grieve him when we resist him because we are afraid of what people may say. In fact, there is, a, there is a, a great portion of the church, and listen to me, I say of the church because I still believe they are the church. That they use scripture to disprove that the Holy Spirit is not doing this anymore. And that same uh, scripture actually proves the work of the Holy Spirit. One that I've heard is on Corinthians when it says that... Um, you know, that we can speak in different tongues and we can have all of this gift and do all of this stuff. But, you know, all of these things are going to, to cease. They're going to stop. And when they stop, and they will stop when the perfect will come. And I don't know where they get from, but they will say that that is the Bible, that the perfect is the Bible. And if you keep reading in that same list of things, they say, what included in there is knowledge. It says, you know... The, the gift will tongue, the, gift, the, 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 uh, the, the tongues will pass away, the, the healings will pass away, and knowledge will pass away. But somehow, we're still going back to knowledge to make up this argument. And that, that is one of the things that, that I use the most, that, that I hear this used the most. To, to, to say that the Holy Spirit is no longer active in our lives, it's no longer pouring out gifts, it's no longer, no, no, no longer working through His church. And they say, well, we don't need that because we have scripture, right? Like if somehow leaning into the work of the Holy Spirit is going to make us put aside scripture when we also believe that the scriptures have been inspired by the Holy Spirit. It was the same spirit that is the one that inspired these people to give us this thing so that we can learn from and that we can teach from. And in the other side, I find the other, the other section of the church that has turned the Holy Spirit into a little source of power that they can plug in and out whenever they feel like. And they have used this 
they have used the Holy Spirit and, 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 and his gifts to further their agendas, to grow their ministry, to make even their, themselves, to put themselves above the rest. Because they have this gift of they have this or they can do that or they can perform this thing. So they elevate themselves and even they use it to make themselves more money and to, 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 to create a, a better life for them. And I believe this is a way that the church has also grieved the spirit. These people also have closed the spirit and have put it into a little box in where for them, if, if there are no crazy things happening, then the Holy Spirit is not there. If there are no crazy things happening, then the Holy Spirit is not moving. If, if people is not rolling in the floor... The Holy Spirit is not there. If people are speaking in tongues, the Holy Spirit is not there. And, and, and we grieve the Spirit because what we do in each, in each camp, in each side, we enclose him. We put him in a box and we tell him, you cannot move farther than this. You have to fit my reasoning. You have to fit what, my background. You have to fit my preferences. And I believe when we, when we drift to any of these, of these two sides of the coin, what we do is we resist him. We resist what he wants to do. One of the biggest problems of, of, of these ones that, that, that embrace the work and the, and the gifts of the spirit and that they have used it, uh, like I said, to further their agendas is that they... A lot of them have, have been infected with, with the, the idea of the prosperity gospel. And, and when, when they, they, they talk about being led by the spirit or, or, or living a life in the spirit, they will never tell you that the spirit might lead you into places that you don't want to go. And I have news for you. Jesus was led into the desert where he was hungry, when he was tested. When there was nobody around him, but the spirit was with him. And we cannot, if we are going to live a life led by the spirit, we have to embrace that as well. That the spirit will lead us into places that we are not going to go. We are not going to want to go. Our flesh is going to resist it. It's going to be uncomfortable because it's going to demand that we die to ourselves. I heard a preacher saying, uh, says he, he's from the United States and says, the American church loves to sing uh, the song o Ocean. It says, Spirit lead me where my trust is without borders and, you know, uh, let me walk upon the waters, whatever you will call me. He says, but at the same time, the American church is one of the churches with the highest divorce rate and people can stay together. Because in the first little bump in the road, they found it as a well, well we, we, the Lord is taking us different ways. And, and, and I've actually heard things, well, that wasn't the plan of the Lord to, to keep you that way. And, and using scripture to, to go against something that the Lord has established. And, and I'm, I'm putting this as an example, not just to bash on the American church. I know they get, they get enough of that. But to, to put in perspective some of the things that we, we, we have to put in our mind when, when we think about living by the Spirit. He's not always going to lead us into places that are going to be flower and music and you're just going to dance around and everything's going to be perfect. There is going to be moments of pain. There is going to be moments of struggle, moments of confusion where you are not going to know what the heck you're going to do. But he is not going to leave you alone. He's going to be with you. And that is the promise. You are not alone. The spirit is with you to empower you. Even though you walk through the valley of shadow and death. You will fear no evil. Because he is with you. And Jesus is gone. It's the Holy Spirit that is in you. The one that will empower you. And will take you to those places. Through the valley. Through the mountain. We cannot, we cannot just reduce the Holy Spirit 
to something that we want to experience only when we come together. He will manifest. He will, he will heal people. He will do things farther and bigger than you can ever imagine. But at the same time, we cannot just think of all those stuff. I, I, I found it sad when, and, I, and I'm talking about this out of experience. When I was pushed into ministry and to believing for the supernatural and, and believing for for, for the gifts of the Spirit and all of the things that I could do. And yet going to bed every night not knowing where I was going to go. Because I don't want you chasing any gift of the Spirit or of any supernatural manifestation. If you don't have within you the assurance that your life and your soul and everything that you are is safe with Jesus. And that your eternal destination is in heaven with Him. That is the first thing that we have to settle. And then from then on we can move to bigger things, to, to other stuff, to other manifestations, other expressions of what the Holy Spirit wants to do. I don't know, I, I honestly don't, don't care what the favorite preacher that you listen to says. But nine out of ten, the Holy Spirit is going to lead you to do something that your flesh will hate. Because Galatians 6, 16, 26 says like this. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit. And the Spirit uh, what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other. So that you are not able to do whatever you want. If you are led by the spirit. You are not under the law. You don't need to keep a whole list. Of little things. That, 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 that you go back to in order to feel safe. If you live by the spirit. You are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality. Impurity. Debauchery. Idolatry. Witchcraft. Hatred. Discord. Jealousy. Fits of rage. Uh, rage. Selfish ambition. Dissensions. Factions. And envy. Drunkenness. Orgies. And the like. And I warn you as I did before. That those who live like this. Will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit. Of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their flesh with his passions and desires. Since we live by the spirit, let us keep in step with the spirit. Let us not become considered provoking and envying each other. I want you to pay attention to that in there. When we live by the Spirit and we claim that we hear from the Holy Spirit, that we live under the, the submission and, and the leadership of the Holy Spirit, we got, we, we got to go back to, to Scripture and, and think that the Holy Spirit, because I've heard people saying such nonsense Opposing to what we just read. If we are living a life that is, 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 uh, is being led by the Spirit. It's a life that is going to uh, lead us to do things and to say things. And to live in a way that our flesh will complain. That is the life of the Spirit. A life that, 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 that through his leading, through what he says, to, to, to the things that he whispers to our heart, to the things that he leads us to, is going to step by step and day by day, going to lead us into dying to ourselves, into dying to our flesh, into dying to our own desires. That is the life that the Spirit That the Spirit promises. So, because I say this, I don't want you to think that I want you to stop believing for the Lord, Lord to act in a supernatural way in your life.
because I need it. There are many things. I don't have it all together. I don't know it all. I don't have everything in my life is perfect and I know what, what, what I'm going to do at every step. I need to trust the Lord. And at times I get sick. At times I, I, I get in situations that I don't know how to respond. And I need his supernatural intervention in my life. We need it. Because we cannot do life. No, we cannot do the life that he called us to, to do and to live without the spirit. In fact, we cannot do and we cannot be the church. We cannot be the bride without the spirit. We cannot be the bride that he called us to be. But we can actually do church in our own idea without the spirit. Because all you basically need is a bunch of people with enough money to get together and put some ideas and put some, some building together and build their own version of the Tower of Babel. I've been in places and I've been part of places where church is done without the spirit. Where people are just building and farthering their, their own agenda and doing what they please and what they want. And, and, and creating all of these things to silence the voice of their conscience that says that they need to die and submit to themselves. It is my prayer and it's the prayer of the leadership in this church. Because I know them. I, I, I fellowship with them. I know their heart. We, we don't want to come in here and do this every Sunday without the spirit. We don't want that. It's not our desire. Well, and you might not like some things. You might be offended at other stuff. You, your expectations might not be met. But that doesn't mean that we are trying to do this without him. We need to be careful with that. And, and, and instead of judging the work of the spirit by, by whatever little thing we are obsessed about. We need to judge the work of the spirit by the fruit that we see. The, the fruit that we see in the people that we have around us. Because against those things there is no law. Instead of judging the work of the Spirit by something that we are obsessed about, that we have a passion about, either it's signs and wonders or gifts or whatever it is. What about we start resting and believing and being thankful to God for the things that He is already doing in our lives. For the things that He has already done. And from then on, with peace and with joy in our hearts, we can look forward to what He wants to do. Because let me something. The, the, let me tell you something. What, what we read said there in Romans 8 says that the children of God are those who are led by the Spirit. And I have seen the other side of this. Where people who are chasing, chasing gifts and, and, and which Paul says that we ought to desire. We ought to desire the, especially the, 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 the better gifts. We ought to desire those gifts. But those who have a passion for that instead of chasing him, instead of chasing the spirit, chase the result of it. And so we have to be careful because what happens is that later instead of us being led by the Spirit, we end up falling in this trap where we think we can tell the Spirit what to do. And we can desire all of the gifts that we want, but the one who gives them according to His grace is the Spirit. It's not us to decide what we get to do. It's not us to decide why, why, why the Lord uses us in the ways that, that He uses us. He puts that grace in you. He puts that in you. He's the one that empowers you in that way. Well, you might learn from somebody else. Uh, you, you, you may be able to do it at times to, to, uh, because, the, because there is a necessity. But it's the Holy Spirit, the one that with his grace empowers you and places you and gives you that gift in order for you to be effective in that task. Is it's countless the amount of stories of people that the Lord uses in one area. And when you look in the, in the life, there is, no, there is no one in their family, there is no one in their bloodline that will ever go that way. There was nothing to do with their personality that will put them in that place. Today, for example, I stand here and I talk to you and I say all of these things. And probably some of you may be getting mad because you may be in disagree. You may, be in this, you may disagree with what I'm saying. 
and I have certain boldness in me to speak what I believe is from the Lord and go home and sleep without worrying about what people are thinking of me. Not because of, what I, of who I am, but because of the grace that has been poured in my life. And because the Lord has empowered me to do this. Because if you, would have, if you would have known me when I was 15 years old, and if you would have known who my family was, who my parents are, and my grandparents are, none of you would have ever given anything for me and thought that I'd be standing here today doing what I'm doing. Because it has nothing to do with who I am, but, but it has everything to do with who Christ is in me and what the Spirit gives me and empowers me to do. And it's in the same case with you. In order to step in what the Lord is calling you, you don't need to wait for anybody to come and, 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 and call you and tell you what to do. It's something that you build in relationship with the Holy Spirit. And if you, lead, if you live under his leadership, one day you may find yourself completely changed, doing something that you never thought that you were going to do. Because when you live under the Spirit... You're not in control of it. You may, you may think and, and you may make your plans and your path and, and think that the Lord is going to take you there. Even when you have received a promise from him. But you have no idea where you're going to go and how you're going to end up in there. We have this, the example of Joseph who had dreams. And if you know the story, you know the dreams that, that basically when you see his dreams in, in every dream, like his brothers are bowing down to him because of what is going to happen later. And he ended up being a, a, a man with the second, with, with most authority in Egypt and saved Israel from starvation. And his brothers end up coming to him and bowing down to him and the relationship was restored. But Joseph had no idea of everything he was going to go through to get to that place. But he lived a life and where the Lord was leading him. He didn't have control of it. And oftentimes we, we believe uh, of things that the Lord wants for our lives and we try to push our way into it. So I want to tell you today that if you are living by the leadership of, of, of the Holy Spirit, relax. If the Lord said that he was going to do it, he will do it. All you need to do is surrender, is yield, is, is yield to his voice. The, the voice that is going to take you to places you don't want to go. It's going to take you to places to say and do things you don't want to say. And your flesh is going to hate. Well, Diego, what's, what's the whole thing here with, with the Holy Spirit? I want to finish with this, with this part. You know, many of us have been, have been taught that we don't need the Spirit because we have the Bible. And I got, I got to tell you something. I know of people who read the Bible every day, who know the Bible better than me, who can quote, quote Scripture Way better than do. In fact, I suck at remembering the exact reference of stuff. I'm horrible at that. But when you look at the life, you find no fruit. Because in order for the word, in order for the Bible and the things that we find in there to be real, you need the Holy Spirit. Because you can read a bunch of stuff in here and it can make none of that can be applied to your life. None of them make sense. None of it is real to you. But it's the power of the Holy Spirit who makes the things that we find in Scripture real to us. So even, even in, order, in order to study your Bible, in order to learn, in, in order to, uh, to make these things real, we need the Spirit. The Spirit that He has placed within us. To understand what is written in there, we need the Spirit. I could say that part of this message was born out of uh, an argument I had with someone on Instagram. Just a joke. Just something that happened. I, I believe it was born out of studying scripture and praying. Not about me losing my, wasting my time fighting with people. But I came across something on Instagram and there was all these Catholics and all these Protestants fighting over. They were bah, 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 going back and forth, you know. You know, because everybody can argue pretty good when you don't have to put on your face. You can just make a comment and just leave. 
and then watch people answer back and forth. And all the Catholics were like, uh, you know, a, a lot of the argument of the, uh, of the Catholic Church is that they can do and they can change things because their, their theology says that they, they believe that Jesus le left us a church. So we, the church is the authority. Uh, in, uh, in theology terms, it says that their ecclesiology is super high. They believe that the church is, 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 like the, is the highest authority, which is something that sometimes I think we lack. And sometimes we look at the church as, as this little thing uh, that, that is always running away from the culture and run, always in trouble when the church is the best thing that has ever happened to the world. Not because of who we are, but because the church is the body of Christ. And the spirit dwelling in it is the one that is day by day finishing and reversing the effects of the curse on creation. And so the Catholics were arguing that the church, the church, so they, they stick to tradition. And their tradition of, uh, a lot of times uh, goes over what scripture says. And that's one of the main differences that Protestants have with uh, with Catholics, that we believe something that in Latin is, is a sola scriptura, that we are, our, our lives are based on only what scripture says. And so the argument in the fight was going between uh, Catholics saying, no, uh, we, we, the, the, Jesus left us a church, Jesus left us a church, and the person says, Jesus left us a Bible, Jesus left us a Bible. But if you go to scripture, you never find that. Because when Jesus left, he never said, I need to leave so I leave you a church or I need to leave so I leave you a Bible. I need to leave so I leave you a spirit. So that the spirit will come and, with, and will dwell within you and will lead you into all truth. And, 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 and hear me well, I'm not saying throw away your Bible. No, that's not what I'm saying. Because I was saying you need the Holy Spirit to learn what the Bible says and to make these things real. But I think we can all agree that the early church was the most mature church and the and the biggest expression of what the church should be like and and day by day we we are trying to find ways on how to how to get back to that and, and so and at times people even romanticize some of the things of what the early church was and and, and they forget that this church was under extreme persecution and, and we want we want the results of that church without the persecution Without that expression of the spirit, without the spirit leading us into places that we don't want to go. But we can all agree that the, 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 that the church is like the best expression of the church has been ever was, was the church. And let me tell you something. This church didn't have the New Testament. The canon of scripture was not completed until years later. This church did not have a New Testament, but they wrote it and they lived it. Because at the same time they understood that Jesus didn't leave them a book. Jesus left them a spirit. And I'm saying again, do not think and don't live here. I'm saying, well, Diego says that we don't need scripture. No, that's not what I'm saying. But I, I am trying to put you back into, into perspective the importance of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And, and for those of you who have grown up uh, uh, probably in places where, where the gifts uh, and the work of the Holy Spirit has been abused. I understand if you are afraid of it now that some things might get out of hand, that people may say things in the name of the Lord when it's, the, it's them speaking. I understand all of those things. But I am not willing to resist the Spirit or to stop the use of something that the, the, the Spirit has given me because some people misuse it. When was the last time that you considered not driving a car because some people have accidents? When was the last time that you may consider not using a knife because some people you kill with a knife? But oftentimes we do, we, we do that with the things of the Spirit. We don't want to go there. We don't want to even consider because there is people over there that misuse that. And we don't want to get caught up in that and put all in the same box. Put all in the same of these crazy ones that say nonsense and, and, get, and get lost in superstition. Or we don't want to get caught up in the other ones. When we are careful, you know, we, we have our, 
our, our, our reservations of things, but we don't want to get put in, in those in the box that, that, that deny this, the work of the Spirit in our lives right now. So our call and our challenge for us today is to get back to what Scripture says. And before we consider and we go uh, behind manifestations of the Spirit, we go first with the Lord. And check our hearts and see if we have the full assurance that our lives are safe with Him. That's the first thing. The Bible says, we were reading there, that the Holy Spirit bears witness to our spirit that we belong to Him. If we get all the gifts, if we get all the manifestations and all the things that we believe for, but every day we live with the doubt that we might die and end up in hell, it's not worth it. That's not the life that Jesus, that Jesus paid with his blood for you to live. There is way more than that. And at the same time, it's my desire that all of us as a congregation, as a church, we live in a way... And also when we come here, we come with an open heart and we come with a surrendered mind and with a surrendered spirit to be willing to hear what the spirit has to say and what the spirit wants to do. I don't know about you, but I don't want to do my life without the spirit. I don't want to build things without the spirit. I don't want to preach things without the spirit. I don't want to go farther in my business without the spirit. I don't want to make decisions without him. I don't want to take another step without his leadership. I don't want to. And it's my prayer that that will be as well your desire. And, and that from there, from that place of surrender, from that place of willingness to have ears to hear to what the Spirit is saying, we will move forward into whatever he wants to do. We will surrender our dreams, we will surrender our desires, we will surrender our expectations of what we think our life should look like. We will surrender our expectations of what we think the, the church should look like. And we lean to him and we will acknowledge him in all of our ways. Knowing that he knows better and that he will lead us into all truth. So today, I would like to finish by prayer and I would like to ask you to, to stand up and there are moments where I believe we have to pray and, and ask for forgiveness and repent for things that probably personally we believe we haven't even done. And I feel that this is one of those moments. Um, I think that we need, and I think we all here agree, we need the intervention of the Spirit in our lives. We need His work. We need His leadership. But I think we all need to repent for the things that we do when, and, and we resist Him and we, and we resist His work. So, I will ask you that as I pray and as I lead the prayer, you will pray with me. And, wh and in whatever place you find yourself today, you will, uh, you will just open your heart and, and open your mind to, to what the Spirit wants to say. There are, there are times where I, I have to do this because things that I grew up with shape the way I see God and the way... That I, I think the spirit can act and I limit him. I limit him to what he wants to do. And I don't want him, my flesh doesn't want the spirit to, to, uh, to, to take me into places that are uncomfortable. Maybe right now you are in a situation just like that. Where you're fighting with your flesh. You know there is something you got to do. There is something that needs to change in your life. There is, might be a friendship you need to cut off. Might be a relationship you, you need to, to cut off. Might be something that you've been working for and it's, no, it's just no given results. And it's like you're hitting your head against the wall and it's not going anywhere. It might be the spirit. It might be that you need to try something different. 
but the Spirit will lead us into all truth. That is the promise that we are not alone. We are not alone. He will lead us into all truth. And even when we make mistakes, even when we screwed up, He's there to comfort us. He's there to take us out of our own mess, to cleanse us and to bring us back in the right track. So as I pray, don't let me pray by myself. Pray with me. So Father, we come to you today as a church, as a body, as your body, as your bride, as the one that you love. And, uh, and we are overwhelmed by that love, Lord. We come to you and we know that you receive us, Lord, and we know that you hear us. And first of all, Lord, we, are, we want to ask you for forgiveness. Lord, forgive us for all the times that in different ways we resist your spirit. All the times that you want to take us to a different place in relationship with you. And we deny you, we resist you for fear of men, for fear of what the future may hold, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us every time we have grieved you because we have said and we have used your name in vain and said that you have said something that you've never said. For the times that we speak way too fast without considering the things, without considering the facts, without thinking, without resting, we just speak too fast, Lord. Forgive us, Father. Forgive us for the time that you prompt us and you you, you push us to, to speak a word to someone, to encourage somebody, to give, even if it's money of time, to give a hug, to give something away, Lord, and we resist it, Lord, forgive us. Lead us, Jesus, into all truth. Lead us, Holy Spirit. Lead us into a closer place with you where we might be able to hear your heart, where we might be able to say, to hear what you have to say. Lord, we, we repent from any sin of, of, uh, of rationalizing who you are, Lord. Teach us to live in the mystery. To live in things that we don't understand. To live in things that make no sense. But they are led by you. Lord, and we want to welcome your leadership into every area of our lives. We want to welcome your leadership in our finances, in our relationship with our children, with our fathers, with our sisters, brothers, with our spouse. We want to welcome you into every situation of our lives, Lord. And how to even deal with sin, how to get rid of it, Lord. You sanctify us and you lead us. Lord, we, we open up our hearts and we yield to your leadership. For some of us, this might be new and we don't know what to do. We don't even know what to, uh, what even Diego is talking about. But Holy Spirit, I ask you that you will surprise. You will surprise us. Lord, by showing us how close you are. And how much you care for small details of our life. Lord, you even know and you notice even how, if one of, of our hairs falls off. You are involved in every detail of our life, Lord, and show us that. For those who think that you are far away and you don't care and that you are way too holy to, to be close and to lead us, Lord. Surprise them, Lord. Hijack our lives. Hijack our services, our church, our plans, our agendas. What we do here in future, Lord, surrender. We surrender, Lord, our plans and what we want to do. Lord, we need your leadership. We need your guidance and we ask you to have your ways in our lives and in this congregation. Teach us to live according to your heart. Teach us to give us, teach us and give us ear to hear what you are saying to the church. Teach us to give you the place of honor that you deserve, Holy Spirit. Lord, and there is an aspect of you that sometimes we don't, we, we don't want to embrace because it might be weird or it might be awkward. Lord, teach us to die to ourselves, to die to our pride. And like David said, I will become even, even way more foolish for your sake. Let us become even more foolish to the eyes of the world 
even more crazy to the eyes of the world not just for the sake of being foolish Lord but for the sake of surrendering to you let our lives be led by your fear and not the fear of men in Jesus name we pray Lord Lord, we believe that when we repent and when we turn to you, Lord, new things happen in our lives. And we want to be expectant for the things that you want to do in our lives and in our congregation from today and on, Lord. We want to encounter you in every day. When we open our scripture, when we open the Bible, Lord, we want, to, we want your word to be life to us, to refresh us, to fill us with joy, with peace. To show us and give us the assurance that we are the righteousness of God. Lord, for those of us that we live and we think you only move by emotions, Lord, show us a different way. Show us that you move in a different way than just, than just when there is an emotional manifestation, Lord. And for all of us that at times to think that you don't move in that way, Lord. Remind us, Lord, that two-thirds of your kingdom are peace and joy. And they come by way of a feeling. They come by way of an emotion, Lord. And we cannot do this life. We cannot be the church without the joy and the peace that you give us, Lord. Let us live in that peace and that joy and in that righteousness that is found in you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your grace, for your spirit. Thank you for hearing, for hearing our prayers. Thank you for forgiving us. Thank you, Lord, for making us right with you every time. Thank you for being with open arms to receive us every time that we come to you. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Jesus' name. And the church says, amen. Amen. This week as you spend time with the Lord and as you read your scripture, as you worship, as you go about your life, invite the Holy Spirit into it. I mean, He is with you. He is in you. But open, open a place in your busy schedule, in the decisions. When you are going to make a, 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 and you're going to take a... a, a, a going to make a decision that might be very important to you and you don't know what to do. Take a moment to pray and to listen and to quiet your heart and to see where the Spirit is, is leading you. Where, what, what God wants you to do. Maybe with a relationship. I don't know. But He knows. And you're not alone. He is with you. Amen. Have a great Sunday and a good week. And I hope you are blessed. In Jesus' name.